Pegasus have released their TMPEG MPEG Smart Renderer 6 program, and I love it. Let's check it out. Full disclaimer, I really like Pegasus products. I think they are problem solvers. I get a lot of things done with them. So when I found out about Smart Renderer, or I should say I decided to finally check it out, version 5 was the newest version available. And I figured, well, it's been a while since they've released version 5. Version 6 should be right around the corner, and I almost didn't buy version 5, and I'm like, eh, I can't resist it. I love the program. So version 6 literally just came out on November 4th. So I'm making this video on November 5th. You probably won't see it until the 6th at the earliest, but the bottom line is I want you all to check this out. If you are a video editor, especially a professional one, but even amateurs could stand to benefit from this because basically to me, it solves a major problem, which is having too much footage and that eats up too much hard drive space. All right, guys, this is the third time I've tried to record this tutorial, and each one has been just too long. So I want to keep this as short as possible. I will be leaving a lot of information out of this, but that's why there's this awesome user manual that you can click on and go to at any time if you want to really get into the details but for this video I just want to show you the way that I use it for most purposes so I'm gonna click on this recent project right here on the left side if I wanted to make a new one I could go here or if I wanted to open one that wasn't on the recent projects table over here I could click that but I want to show you this right here Okay, so when you first open this up, it'll tell you about the video preview display operation and how you can change the different options. I'm going to hit continue because what I really want to do is just do a simple edit. And here's how you accomplish that. First, I want to find the frame that I want to start on. And that'll be frame zero in this case. So the very beginning of the video. And you'll notice something Right underneath the zero, it says iframe. The iframe is the frame of video in a group of pictures that is least compressed. It's the frame that the frames around it reference. And if I go to the right, one frame, see how it says P frame? And then if I keep going, it might say B frame. Wow, it, didn't, it took until the 128th frame to get to my next iframe because it was smart enough to know that all this footage looks about the same. Cool. The iframes are important because that is where we want to edit. So, let's say I want just the first five seconds. I'll go to the five second mark, and then I'm going to hit this magical button that will take this edit point, we'll call it, to the iframe. At which point, I want to keep this, right? So what I do is I hit my bracket right here, my out point, hit OK, and then at that point I can go to format, and then see how it says rescue right here? The audio says rescue. That means it's going to be re-encoded unless I change the audio setting. So click that down here where it says audio setting and change this output mode to manual encode all and then change stream format to either linear PCM, FLAC, or ALAC. Sample rate should be the same as the original file and then quantization can be either 16-bit, 20, or 24-bit. I'll put it at 24-bit what I can do from here is actually analyze the file to make sure that I'm not going to lose any quality. So click this button over here that says Start Analysis. And then we can see our video is all gray. That means it's not going to be recompressed. 
except at the very, very end, there's going to be some recompression for whatever reason. And then also the audio is going to be the same. Okay, so now that I have all this set, let me put this back on the flack. And 24 bit. I can go to output, find my folder that I want to export into, change this to say flack. It's going to go really quick. See? That's it. Now I only did a few seconds, but here's the cool thing. Even if I did like 10 minutes of footage, it would still go very fast because I'm not recompressing anything. Now here's the other way to do in and out points. Let's say I want to keep the beginning and the end of this file. I'll have to cut the middle section out. So here's how you do that. Again, I want to keep the iframes. All right. So I'll find five seconds in and then find next iframe. Hit my in point and then I'm going to find where I want to leave this. So we'll do it. We'll do it like right around 11 seconds and I'm going to hit next iframe. And I don't want to cut this iframe out because if I do, that means that everything to the right side of it is going to have to be re-encoded. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you. Watch. So I'm going to cut this out, right? And then I'll go to this button right here, the menu, and I'll find Smart Rendering Analyzer. Now you see that big chunk of red? That's because I got rid of the iframe. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit close and then control Z to undo. And I'm going to go just to the left of this iframe and make my cut there. So hit the out point and then I can either press the delete key on the keyboard or click this button. And now if I go to the analyzer, it'll show me that I didn't lose any quality. Remember that big red chunk? It's gone. Now the audio still has to be changed when I go to output it, but yeah, pretty cool, right? <laughs> Once I do that, hit OK, go to Format, again, change audio to FLAC, that way I don't lose any quality. All right, that's the end of my Smart Renderer 6 basic tutorial. You guys now know how to make a simple cut, which is the foundation of the program. If you want to see another tutorial where I rotate and mirror a video losslessly, then check out the second channel. I'll link to that below or maybe on screen right, right now. Everyone, I hope you understand why I like Smart Renderer 6 now. Yes, it's very basic, but it does have advanced features. I believe it has like 200 transitions. So if you want to actually make a full video, then you can do that. I think it has like a loudness volume adjuster now with a filter, but of course you have to re-encode your audio if you choose to use that. But for what I need it for, which is to use modern codecs, both video and audio, this is perfect for me. I love that it still works on Windows version 7. I don't know about Windows 8.1. It supports Windows 10, of course, officially. But yes, Windows 7 works, at least on my system, but your mileage may vary. But yeah, also, if you're out there and it doesn't work, if version 6 doesn't work on your system, but version 5 does, buy it now while you still can, <laughs> because otherwise you won't be able to have it. Anyway, yeah, if you're a video editor, give this video a thumbs up, even if you're not. If you watch the whole video, pat yourself on the back. I try to make it as interesting as possible but uh, programs like this, you know, it's when you're actually editing, that's just how it really is. But yeah, this thing, I just love the space savings. So I'll have these files. They won't take up a lot of space. So if I archive whatever I edit, then I'll have a lot smaller uh, amount of footage to burn onto a disk or to save onto a hard drive. 
It's a space saver. It's a time saver. I love programs like this because normally I wouldn't get rid of my other footage because of that quality hit. But the quality is retained by doing things this way and uh, I just love it. So thank you all for watching. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.